Hello, welcome back to Animated Literacy. This is part six of the overview and research for the program. In this section, we are going to be talking about the animated literacy characters, their names, their gestures for sounds, and a special language that parents often use when speaking to infants to help them hear the sounds in language that's frequently referred to as motherese. In How Babies Talk, they tell us that babies start to coo when they are about three months old. They make delightful little oo and ah sounds and take turns when parents are face to face with them talking and smiling. In Scientist in the Crib, Patricia Cool tells us that when we talk to an infant, the pitch of our voice rises dramatically. Our intonation becomes very melodic and sing-songy and our speech slows down and has exaggerated lengthened vowels. So it's motherese that really helps children to hear and differentiate between the sounds in, in language. Patricia Cool found that it also can be highly effective with adults and older children. It's well known that if you're learning a second language as a very young child, you tend to speak it without an accent. But when you learn to speak it as an older child or as an adult, it's common to have an accent come along with that. So, but she found that some of that may simply be because older learners don't have the opportunity to hear mother ease to help them to properly associate the sounds of the new language with the speech patterns that they need to learn. So she did a research study where she played a tape recording of Mother Ease spoken to her doctoral students in a language that none of them spoke. And she found that it functioned as a relaxation tape. So if we hear Mother Ease in a language that we're familiar with and that we're fluent in, it's like talking down to us and it may make us feel insulted. But if you're learning a new language and someone speaks to you in motherese, whether you're in a baby or an older learner, it's speaking up to you and giving you something that you can grow into. As Patricia Cool traveled the world studying how babies learn their languages, she found that there are three vowel sounds that are included in all of the world's languages. And she labeled these super vowels and she tells us that all over the world, these are the first three speech sounds that a baby will produce. The three sounds she discovered are oo, e, and ah. David Seville, back in the 1950s, stumbled into these three sounds, put them into a song, and it went to the top of the charts, probably because it's so in, much in common with all human beings. His old song sounded like this, oo, e, oo, ah, ah. Ting tang, walla walla bing bang. Oo ee, oo ah ah, ting tang, walla walla bang bang. So if you've ever heard that song before, it probably stuck in your brain and you can remember it for the rest of your life. They had a lot of fun with the ah sound in the 2010 Winter Olympics that were held in Utah. They made it, GE made an entire commercial all centering around the sound of ah. And it started out sounding like this. Okay, sweetie. Open wide and say ah. 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 So you can have a lot of fun playing with vowel sounds and, and really play on the emotion and the ability to stretch them. You cannot do that with all of your consonant sounds. So it's essential that we introduce at least some vowels before we start teaching consonants, which is the opposite of what reading programs generally do. Most reading programs start out with m and f. And, n and sounds like that, that, that are consonants that can be stretched out. And then they move into sounds like b, and, they t and there's a long discussion many times about don't put the uh after b. Well, the human voice cannot produce it without a vowel sound. And in fact, the sound of the vowel that comes after the consonant often changes or influences the sound of that consonant, which makes it even more difficult to produce that consonant in isolation. So babies are a whole lot smarter 
than many of our reading programs, they don't produce consonants first. Instead, they learn several vowel sounds before they produce any of their consonants. And they'll coo with single vowel sounds from about two to four months old until they're seven or eight months old when they start to add their consonant sounds. So a baby starts out with oo, and when we teach these sounds, we give them a character. This is Dr. Ollie Ostrich. And Dr. Ollie Ostrich, when you come to see him, if you have a sore throat, he's going to take out this stick. He's going to ask you to open your mouth wide and say, ah. So you, when you're introducing this to the children, you can actually get them to tell you what the sound is rather than you telling them. So rather than seeing children as an empty vessel that we have to fill with all of this knowledge, instead we could simply say to kids, how many of you have ever been to the doctor before? And when he took, if you had a sore throat and he took out this stick, what did he ask you to do with your mouth? Open wide. And what did he ask you to say? Ah, that's Dr. Ollie Ostrich's sound. So whenever you see Dr. Ollie Ostrich, think of going to the doctor, take your finger, put it up in the air like this, point to your mouth and go, Ah, what's the sound for Dr. Ollie Ostrich? Ah, here's Lulu Moose. Lulu Moose is playing dress up with the antlers that her daddy shed from last year. And this is her birthday. She got a brand new blue flute that she's playing. And while she's playing, she's also wiggling her loose tooth. So whenever you think of Lulu Moose, I want you to think of her playing dress up in daddy's antlers, wiggling your loose tooth while you're playing the flute and go, Ooh, what did we do for Ollie Ostrich? Ah, what did we do for Lulu Moose? Ooh, and here's Ike, and he's riding his bike up into the sky, just like they do at the end of the movie E.T. So when you think of Ike, I want you to take hold of the pedals of your bicycle, move them like this, ride your bike up into the sky, and go, I. Now, as each one of these is being introduced, we can either just simply put them with consonant sounds. So you can, in the same lesson, you can introduce some vowels and introduce some consonants, isolate the vowel only momentarily, but then right away blend it. So if you were introducing a few consonants along with your vowels, here's baby Barnaby and he plays the banjo and everybody gets excited about his wonderful banjo playing and they clap and cheer for him and he bows for the audience. So when we say his sound, we go, B. Now there, I've isolated it momentarily. But if we put it together with oo, what do we have? Boo boo. And if we put it together with, or excuse me, with ah, uh, we have ba ba. But if we change the oo, we have boo boo. And here is Gilda Goose, who's gliding. So if she's gliding like this, and we put her in front of oo, we have goo goo. But if we put it in front of ah, uh, we have ga ga. So right away we're blending, and this is a, a skill that many children really struggle with when they're learning to read. But as they tell us in Becoming a Nation of Readers, it doesn't do any good to learn sounds unless we can blend them together to produce words. So what reading programs have done is they have in many cases spent months or, in, or sometimes even more than a year having children just learn their consonant sounds. They isolate those consonant sounds rather than blend. And then when it comes time for them to blend, blending has been pruned out. So blending is a natural skill that children have to have when they're learning to speak. And all children babble with goo-goos and gagas and mamas and babas before they produce their first words. So we need to do that same kind of, of a skill when we're teaching in the classroom. So then we're going to start putting it into the context of an old song. So now we can take out the old song, Are You Sleeping, Brother John? And we can start to sing that song initially with gestures. And then we can start to play with our vowel sounds and in the last line. So here's our recording of Are You Sleeping? And it goes like this. And here's how you would gesture it. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping, Brother John? Brother John, morning bells are ringing, morning bells are ringing, ding dong, ding, ding dong, ding. So now if we were to take our ah sound, we can put it into our song and sing it like this. Are you at the doctor? 
doctors, are you at the doctors? Ollie Ostrich, Ollie Ostrich, Ollie's bells are saying, Ollie's bells are saying, ah, 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 ah. Are you wiggling a loose tooth? Are you wiggling a loose tooth? Lulu Moose, Lulu Moose, Lulu's bells are saying, Lulu's bells are saying, ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And I have a verse written down here for Ike. So if we were doing it for Brother Ike, Ike rides his bike up into the sky at night like this. So take hold of the pedals of your bicycle, ride your bike up into the sky, and sing after me this way. Are you riding? Are you riding? Brother Ike, Brother Ike. Ike spells are saying, Ike spells are saying, I, 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 I. What's our sound for Ike? I. So stretch it out and give it mother ease. What was our sound for Dr. Ollie Ostrich? Ah. What was our sound for Lulu Moose? Ooh. So each time we're introducing a vowel sound, we give the sound a gesture, we give it a little bit of context, then later we can come back. And with a full story for each of our sounds and give it more context. So now let's move on to the next one. Here's Eve, and she's leaping over three green, tall green trees. So when you think of ease, put one hand on one knee and leap over the top of those three trees. So show me three and make this sound. Eee! Or if you want to put the wuh in front of it, you can go wee as you're leaping over the trees. So if we put her into our song, it would be, are you leaping, are you leaping, Sister Eve, Sister Eve, Eve's bells are saying, Eve's bells are saying, e, 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 e. Here's Actress Annie, and Actress Annie wants to be an actress when she grows up. So her friends help her with her acting, by seeing if they can guess what she's acting like. And she acts like all kinds of things that begin with her sound. So she acts like an alligator, an angry ant, an astronaut, and an antelope. And she has a special abacus. So each time her, guess, her friends guess correctly, she gets to add a bead on her abacus. So if they say, oh, that's an antelope, we move one bead over here. Then if they go, oh, you're acting like an astronaut. Now she can add one more bead, and one plus one is two. Then if they get the alligator correct, she can move one more bead, and two beads plus one equals three. So whenever you think of actress Annie, we're going to think of her adding on her abacus and make an addition sign. And an addition sign looks like this. Put one arm across your chest horizontally, then vertically put another up like this. So now we formed an addition sign and her verse would be, are you adding, are you adding, actress Annie, actress Annie, Annie's bells are saying, Annie's bells are saying, ah, 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 ah. What was our sound for Eve? E. What's our sound for Ike? I. What's our sound for Dr. Ollie? Ah, and what was our sound for Lulu Moose? Ooh, and then you move right on to the next one. Here's a picture of Edgar Elf. Now, Edgar Elf is so tiny that he's able to live in a tiny little envelope. And he loves watching the elephants, so he's placed his envelope at the edge of Ellie Elephant's enclosure. Well, he likes to exercise in that envelope, and as long as Ellie Elephant stays in her enclosure, everything's fine. But one day, she escaped from her enclosure, stepped on the end of his envelope, and fortunately, he'd been exercising enough that he was fast and, and strong enough to get away without being stepped on. So whenever we think of Edgar Elf, show me how strong he is from exercising and bring your muscles up like this and flex them and go, exercise, eh. What's our sound for Edgar? Eh. Are you exercising? Are you exercising, Edgar Elf? Edgar Elf, Edgar's bells are saying, Edgar's bells are saying, eh, 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 eh. Here's Uncle Upton, and Uncle Upton, when he was a child, he wanted to grow up and be a professional baseball player. But when he grew up, 
he wasn't good enough to be paid to play baseball. So he decided he would grow onions in his onion patch to make Uncle, Un Uncle Upton's utterly delicious onion soup. Now remember, we're working on sounds here, not letters. So onion doesn't begin with the sound of, with the letter U, but it begins with the sound of U. So it doesn't matter how we spell it. It matters what the s sound is. So he was growing his onions and selling his utterly delicious onion soup when he discovered that the children of Upland had no place to play baseball. So he converted his onion patch into a baseball field and then discovered there was no place for the umpire to stand behind home plate. So Uncle Upton climbed up into his umbrella tree and he hung upside down over home plate and called the runners safe or out. So whenever you think of Uncle Upton, point up into the air and go, ah. So Uncle Upton's verse would be, are you upside down? Are you upside down? Uncle Upton, Uncle Upton, Uncle's bells are saying, Uncle's bells are saying, uh, 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 eh, 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 e, 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 I, 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 ah, 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 ooh, ooh, ooh. So now we're ready to move on to our next vowel sound. And here's a picture of Ichabod Ichthyosaurus. Ichabod Ichthyosaurus lives in the Indian Ocean, and here's Iggy, who is his trainer and keeper. And Iggy feeds him wonderful wig, um, inchworms. One day, as Iggy was feeding him, him inchworms, one inchworm inch into his mouth and caused his throat to itch. And he began scratching like crazy until Iggy got the inchworm out. So whenever you think of Ichabod Ichthyosaurus, think of itching, cross your arms like this, itch both of your shoulders and go, eh, for itching. Are you itching? Are you itching? Ichabod Ichthyosaurus, Ichabod Ichthyosaurus. Ichabod's bells are saying, Ichabod's bells are saying, eh, 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 eh. This is Abe, and Abe loves to roller skate, and he lives at the bay. So whenever he can, he goes up to the top of a high, tall hill near the bay, puts on his roller skates, and goes skating down to the bay. So when you think of Abe, I want you to form the shape of a wheel of a roller skate, put yourself on top of that skate, go up on top of that hill, and as you come down the hill, go, Hey! What's our sound for Abe? Hey, what was our sound for Lulu? Ooh, ah, I, e, ah, eh, uh, i, and ooh again. Okay, so now we have Old Joe Crow, and here's Old Joe Crow, and he's in his boat and he's rowing himself home. So whenever you think of old Joe Crow, think of rowing your rowboat home, take hold of both oars like this by putting your arms out in front, and as you pull back on the oars, I want you to give a great big groan and go, oh! So old Joe Crow's sound is, oh. What did we do for Lulu? Ooh, ah, I, E, A, E, A, I, and A, and O. Here's a picture of June, and she has a pet mule. And just like puppy dogs often do, June's pet mule chewed up her brand new blue shoes. And she was very angry, so she took both index fingers, held them out like this, and scolded her mule by going, you bad mule. So when you think of, of June and her pet mule, think of her scolding the mule and go, you bad mule, and then just, just shorten it to you. This is a picture of Arnie Aardvark. And Arnie Aardvark likes to go and play in a park where Olympic gymnasts often exercise and prepare for the gymnastics events 
in the Olympics. And they climb up on the high bar and they hold onto the high bar and they twirl around on it and do all of these fancy tricks. So when they're done and they go home for the night, Arnie Aardvark goes out and pretends to be an Olympic gymnast. And he reaches up high, he grabs the high bar and pulls down and hangs from the high bar with one arm. So reach up with one arm, grab the high bar, pull down and go, R, are you on the high bar? Are you on the high bar? Arnie Aardvark, Arnie Aardvark. Arnie's bells are saying, Arnie's bells are saying, R, R, R. Here's a picture of Ordy Orson, and Ordy Orson loves to play sports. For each sport that she plays, she has a special pair of orange shorts. And so she loves to shop for those shorts, and sometimes she shops using a telephone. So one day she called up on the telephone and she ordered the store to send her four pairs of sporty orange shorts. Well, she was talking very fast and the person on the other end of the line accidentally put a zero after that number four. And if you have a four after your zero, it doesn't say four any longer. It says 10, 20, 30, 40. So instead of a little box with four pairs of shorts, she got a great big box with 40 pairs of shorts and a bill for $400. So she was sore at the store and she ordered the store to take back the extra shorts. So when you think of ordering, put one hand on your hip, put your index finger out in front and, and go, or for ordering. What did we do for Arnie? R, what did we do for June's pet mule? U. So now we have Whirling Irving. Whirling loves to ride his scooter. And when he's riding his scooter, he gets it going really fast and then he makes these jerky turns by taking hold of the steering wheel, turning it too quickly. And what do you think the tires say when he turns that steering wheel? So when you think of Whirling Irving, take hold of your steering wheel, turn it and go. Here's Woody Woodchuck. Now Woody Woodchuck lives out in the cookie tree forest. And one day he was disappointed when the biggest, ripest cookies were so high up in the tree that he couldn't reach them. So he took hold of that tree and he shook it really hard. And when he shook that tree, the biggest, ripest cookie fell out of that tree, hit him in the stomach, and what did he say? Oh! So when we think of, of Woody Woodchuck, think of being hit in the stomach by that cookie and go, oh! What's our sound for Woody Woodchuck? Oh! What's our sound for Irving? What's our sound for Orty? Or, and what was our sound for June's pet mule? You. This is a picture of Grouchy Owl. Grouchy Owl was chasing Brown Mouse one day, round and round the townhouse. And just as he got up close to Brown Mouse, she jumped through a little tiny door. Grouchy Owl's going too fast, so he bumps into the door and he grabs his head and he goes, ow! So whenever you see Grouchy Owl and Brown Mouse, think of bumping your head and go, ow! And finally, this is a picture of Joy. And Joy's favorite story is The Wizard of Oz, and her favorite character in the story is the Tin Man. So she has her own Tin Man that she loves to play with. Well, she played with it so much that she, the joints got squeaky and started making lots of noise and disturbing her brothers. So in order to keep, be able to continue playing with her toy, she got an oil can and she oiled the Tin Man's squeaks so that her brothers wouldn't be bothered by it. So whenever you think of Joy and her Tin Man, think of oiling, get out your oil can, pump your thumbs up and like the, down like this and go, oi, are you oiling, are you oiling? Joy's noisy toy, Joy's noisy toy, Joy's bells are saying, Joy's bells are saying, oi, 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 oi. So those are all 17 of our vowel sounds. In our next section, we're going to be introducing your consonant sounds and we're going to work more on our blending. So thank you for joining me and I hope to see you in the next session.